hello guys thank you for coming back here welcome to today's tutorial where we'll be learning how to make this hair wrap or scarfinito which has this crinoline and multiple embellishment attached on it and you can also attach the design down to your turban cap if you are just clicking in for the first time you are welcome to our youtube channel please kindly do well to subscribe before leaving and if you have done so thank you so much in today's tutorial the materials needed include satin fabric of which two and a half yards we'll be using we'll be using crinoline three yards though of the big crinoline your scissors your measuring tape matching color of thread your gum and appliques for embellishment this particular design was requested for and kindly bear with me because this video is an old tutorial which was just re-edited for the purpose of learning for this calculator bridge, first we'll be needing our fabric and I have my fabric here. Now you can make use of any fabric of your choice but I'm using dull face satin. Then the measurement of the fabric I bought from the market two and a half yard which is 36 inches in two places and 18 inches in one place. While the full length of your fabric is the normal 60 inches or by 58 inches so the reason why i got this is because i want the wrap to go around the head not just once if i wanted it to go around the head just once i would have been making use of 60 inches so this is one This is two. And this is about 17 inches. Sometimes when you are buying from the market, it's not exactly the way it is because some measuring tape differs. So this is two and a half yards. Now the length, which is my hair circumference for my base, is going to be two and a half yards. Why? For the width, it is going to be 18 inches. So from the other side, which is by 60, this other side, which is by 60, I'm going to measure out 18 inches and then I will cut it out. So remember one side is going to be 36 twice and 18 once. That particular side is going to be the length which will go around the head why this other side which is by 60 you're going to be cutting out 18 inches from there for your for the width of your scaffinator base so this is it from this end to this end is my 18 inches which is serving as the width why the length which is the head circumference is my two and a half yard like I said earlier, the reason why I'm using this is so that I can go around the head several, not just two months. However, you can try to alter the measurement and use 60 inches or use just two yards, which is 72 inches. Depends on you. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be folding my, my fabric into two. That is for the length. I'll be folding it into two this way. And then I'm going to be drawing a curve on it. So this is my work. Like I said, you fold the entire length into two this way. Then get your measuring tape and then measure out 12 inches and mark. So this is where I have my 12 inches here. Now I'm also mark 12 inches on the other end. And it is here I have my 12 inches too now make a curve from this first 12 inches mark make the make a curve round your work until you get to the second end which is here so this is it from this point make a curve round till you get to this other end here and I have done that so I'll get my scissors now and proceed to 
cut around this curve. Now for your curve, you can make it round like it is here, like you can make the end round like this or you can make it to have a pointed end. You can make it have a pointed end like this second mark I have or you can make it a curve like this first mark. Now the essence of this is to, um, is to achieve that V shape at the end of a scarf. You know when you have a scarf? So the, like I said earlier, the essence of this mark here is to achieve that end on a scarf. For instance, when you have a scarf like this, you are tying your scarf, you fold it in a triangle form. You see this tip at the end. You see this tip at the end and this other tip at the end. This is what we are trying to achieve from this curve. We don't want the end to be four corner like this so that it will be easier to tuck it in on your on your wrap. It will not form a very, very big bulge on your wrap. So I'll just get my scissors and cut out. So after cutting it out, I have this. I use the round shape instead of the triangle shape. It depends on you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to my weaving machine and I'm going to weave the ends. I will weave all the ends and that ends it. So here I have my base. As you can see the edges, they have already been weaved. This is this other round edge. This is the tip. Everything has been weaved. So my base is ready. All I have to do is to um, get my electric iron and iron my fabric to straighten it out. Then I can proceed to attach my design on it. So this is all for this design of scaffolator base. Now I want to quickly add this. To give your fabric a bit of weight, you can decide to double your fabric. So while cutting out your fabric, instead of cutting out 18 inches for the width, you cut out 36 inches and then fold into two and weave round or sew it round so that your fabric becomes lined and doubled and has a bit of weight. So I recommend you cutting out 36 inches for the width, folding it into two to give you 18 inches or folding it into folding your 18 inches into two to give you nine inches whichever works for you depends on how big and bulky you want your scaffinator wrap to be this design first ensure that your base is ready and i have mine here now we're going to be working with crinoline and i have my crinoline here okay the color of crinoline is the same as that of the, my working table so just try to get what i'm trying to illustrate i'm making use of white crinoline this is the pattern of crinoline I'm using and this crinoline that I have here is 3 yards of course you can decide to make use of something smaller or bigger depending on the size of design you are creating I have my bias here so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be it's two ways the first um, pattern is that I will just the way it is get my bias and tape one end of my crinoline so by taping the end of my crinoline with bias i want to achieve something like this pink crinoline which i have as you can see this end is different from this end so this end here if i have something like a fabric it's my bias and it has been taped so you just tape it round with your sewing machine place your bias on your at the edge of your crinoline this way fold it down and then sew it till you get to the end that is one pattern now the second one is to fold your crinoline into it i'm going to be working with this pattern for this design fold it into you know we have three yards so when you fold it into two you get like one and a half yard because it's now in fold now rather than using your bias we are going to be using our fabric itself so from the fabric i cut out this stripe of material that will be able to tape the edge of the crinoline remember i folded it into two so here now i have two yards sorry it is two inches wide from here to here is two inches wide why the length is 
the same one and half yard when you fold your crinoline into two so i'm going to be using this to tape the edge of my bias sorry to tape the edge of my crinoline so this is my piece of fabric will serve as my bias rather than using my normal bias that is this normal bias i'll be using the fabric in place of it so i'll place it on my same machine to sew please look if you place it this way the edges are going to free so you need to fold in the edges and then iron it down folding the other edge and iron it down so that when you are placing it on your crinoline this edge will go in like your normal bias you see the way this edge is folded that is how it will be the same thing applies to the other side so this is what i'm trying to illustrate you cannot place it this way and sew it down you see the edges are already free instead the edges need to be folded in see this side see the way it is folded in so when it's folded in the rough edges will go inside for both the back and the front then you can now sew it down that is it for this i'm going to tape the edge of my crinoline here i have my crinoline and as you can see i have taped one end of it using my fabric i didn't use my bias tape for this so remember i said i'm making use of three yards and i folded it into two this is why i folded it into two for adding my bias so now i have one and a half yard in fold which is 36 inches and 18 inches in fold now i'm going after taping it i'm also going to fold it into two again to get the needle so i have the needle here now we want to make the want to make the design the crinoline design for the base now i'm going to look for the end that has this the side that has this fraying end i don't know if you can see this clearly the colors are contrasting so this part of it has this frame and that is open why this other part has is the part that was folded so is this frame and i'm going to be working towards this end now remember i folded my work into two so as the way my camera is positioned now this frame end is on the left side of the fold now i'm going to be making gathers towards this side that is frame from the middle point here to this side that is free i have my needle and thread here already now this is how i'm going to be doing it remember it is folded i'm just going to be gathering it this way like this remember we're coming towards the middle this way i'll make another pleat on it this way i'm going to get my needle and thread and I'm going to be stitching it. Then I'll continue. I'll make another pleat on it this way. Get it again. Fold it. I don't know if you can touch. I'm trying to illustrate here. Fold it. Make another stitch. Then get my needle and thread to come up through it again. So I'm packing, then I'm going to pleat it down this way. Then this end that is frame, I will gather it and bring it down to the middle like this and pack everything once. So I'll just tack this down several, several times. To help me secure it in place. And then this is it for this frame end. This is what I get. Now remember this other end now is the side to the part that was folded. What I want to get now is a circle. So I'm just going to start again. I'll continue pleating it. I'm bringing it down. Remember it's in fold to ensure you gather it way. Then I'll be pleating it to ensure that I form a circle. Pleat it down this way. 
I'll be pleating it down this way. See the way I'm pleating it? It's going round and I'm trying to form a circle so that this end can overlap on this part here. Yeah. I'll continue. Pleat it down. It's coming in place. Okay, this part is okay this way. I'm going to use my needle and thread to tack it down to help me hold it in place so that I don't lose it. As soon as I'm done packing, I'll pick it again and continue making my pleats. Remember, it's in fold, so you have to be working with both. Pick both, like it's two here. Pick both together when making your pleats. So I'm doing it, I'm taking it round. I'm taking it round and finally I have it this way. So I'm going to give this a finishing tack to join all sides together. So this is it now. After joining everything together, I packed all together and I cut off my SS SS thread. This is for the design. Now for the second part of the design. I'm going to be making petals and rose. You can get an already made rose and attach on your work, or you can get a trimming in place of a rose. I, it depends on what you have, what is suitable for you. For instance, you have a matching color of these petals, you can get it and place on it, or maybe your trimming, something like this, you can get it and place on it. Depends on you. But then I'll be making a petals with flower. Can I swear make use of this and maybe add a brooch at the middle of it in order to embellish it. Then place on your scarfinator design. This is one design. But then I'll be making petals with my fabric. Petals with my fabric. And I have my fabric cut out here. Now to make your petals, I have different sizes. That's two sizes here. First, this this particular set is 8 inches long and this particular set is 10 inches long. So you cut out 8 inches by 7.5 inches in 5 places and then you cut out 10 inches by 7.5 inches in 6 places. After cutting it out, you sew from this end to this end. Like I said earlier, to give your work a neat finishing, after sewing, you can trim off the edges, the excess, using your pinking shears scissors before you proceed to turn your fabric inside out. So this is it. I just finished trimming this edge. I will now turn my fabric inside out. Once again, I have 8 inches by 7.5 inches in 5 places. And then I have 10 inches by 7.5 inches in six places i folded into two and i finished sewing it i'll proceed to turn each fabric inside out i'm starting with my eight inches fabric eight inches long fabric and i have five of them here after turning it inside out you place the sewn part at the middle this way and then you iron your fabric so this is what i have now before I continue, I'm going to get my crinoline. This is my small size crinoline. It is 3 inches wide. It's a 3 inches wide crinoline. Now you get your piece of fabric and then pass it in. You are going to do this for all, far, all your piece of fabric, including that of the 10 inches fabric. So when you pass it in and ensure that your, it is well placed, you get your scissors to cut off the excess and repeat for all other pieces of fabric which you have cut out. Having done that for all my fabric, I'm going to start picking it one after the other and I'm going to be joining each one using a rolling stitch. So when you fold this into two, this way, you now pass your thread in and make a rolling stitch at one end.
so this is it for the first piece i will pick the second piece again ensure that my crinoline is well placed inside fold it into two and then make a running stick at the end to join it together so as soon as i'm done with this i will continue with the same procedure for all other pieces of fabric that are left and then i will also do the same for my 10 inches piece of fabric after joining all five pieces i have it this way now to end it i'll be passing my needle and thread through the first piece of fabric that i started working with and then i'm going to drag it in place please also remember that you have to repeat this same procedure for your 10 inches fabric now i'm going to tack this multiple times to secure my thread before cutting off the excess thread now this is my 10 inches piece of fabric here and this is my 8 inches piece of fabric here now this is how i'm going to place it my 10 inches piece of fabric is going to be staying here i'm going to get my crinoline and place on it this way and finally get my 8 inches piece of fabric to be at the top of the crinoline then i will get my needle and thread and i'm going to tack all three together as one before i place on my scaffinator base so i'm just going to tack this down before placing on my base this is the first one this is the 10 inches fabric it's going to be at the back so when i get my base this way i will attach it down like this then I will get my 8 inches and place it at the top here. 8 inches is going to be at the top. So this will be the front, while the 10 inches will be the back. Another way to do this is I will just place my 10 inches this way, then place the 8 inches on top. So it will, there will be nothing at the back again. That is another design. Then I can get, um, let's say, a flower, something like this, and glue it down. And the design is ready, it's finished. But for this, I just want one step to be at the back, one step to be at the front. Then I can now get my flower and then glue it down at the middle. So I'm just going to give it finishing touches. I'll tack this 8 inches to this other side first. This is my work. I've attached both the 8 inches on it and the 10 inches beneath it and i'm going to proceed with attaching it to my base i have my scaffinator base here and i'm going to be folding it into two you can make it of any base of your choice so this is the base i'm going to be using i'll fold it into two to get the middle because i want to attach the design at the middle so this is where my middle is so i'm just going to use my pin to place at that point so that I can be able to know where it is positioned. Then I will measure out the width of the fabric, which is about 17 inches, and then I'll just measure out 5 inches from here and mark it. So I'm going to be placing my design the 10 inches is going to be at the back this way at that five inches mark so i'll start attaching at this five inch mark this way i'll use my needle and thread again to sew it down so this is my work and i will finish tacking it down on my base please when tacking ensure that your tacking is done neatly and it is also firm so all that is left for me is to get a little accessory whatever flat accessory i would prefer or if i would prefer a brooch i would just get it and place at the middle here or i get a flat accessory such as this and use my glue to place it down at the middle and my work is done i'll be illustrating how to 
wear it on the mannequin head. So I have my design here. Okay, you can start by wearing a tuban cap or a tuban it depends on you. So I'm just going to fold this in a bit. And then I have it this way. And then I'm going to gather it at the back. I will try to tie it at the back to secure it in place. This is the bag here. And I've tied my base in place. Now bringing it to the front, I'll start wrapping the handle one after the other at the front this way. So I'll just take it off. I can also decide to twist it like this and place it this way. Then take it to the back and wherever it ends, I'll tuck it in. Then I'll continue, I'll bring the other handle to the front too. And then I'll wrap it round again. Please just try to get my illustration. So I'll just wrap it again. Round till it ends. Then I'll set my design in place the way I want it to be. So this is the finished work of our um, scaffinator design. So you are wrapping, how you wrap it also determines how it comes out. And this is the front view. Thank you so much for watching. This brings us to the end of today's tutorial. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. Until our next tutorial. Bye.